If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Hello my fellow lads today Saints, Ken Z Retro here, back once again, and welcome to episode 25. Of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all your latest gaming news, rumours, and of course those sweet points and trophies at the end of the show. So what do we have lined up for this week? Well, we've got news on place. We've got news on PlayStation where you may there's finally gonna there may be an option to finally get an option to change your username. Uh, Cyberpunk. Apparently coming out in 2019. Um, what else do we have? We've also got uh, November's PlayStation Plus games already leaked, apparently. Uh, the co-founder of Blizzard leaving the company. Um, no plans for Minecraft 2, according to Mojang. Uh, Civilization 6 coming to iPhone. Overwatch getting a Lego set. Uh, a new Nintendo Switch model coming next year. Um, EA and the Premier League teaming up for a new eSports competition. And in the points and trophy section at the end of the show, in honour of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we're going to be going through all 50 achievements for the game. And if, if you fancy being one of the... If you fancy being one of the lucky... If you're one of the lucky folks that are able to rent this game on release day, good on you. That's all thanks to the service at Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21-day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. No late fees. Keep the games as long as you like, or keep them forever at a discounted price from the online store. Once you start renting, you're going to start saving. You can play the latest games for as little as £10 a month. That's how good this service is. So that's boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. It's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Oh, goody. We have a gaming screw up of the week. Been a while since we've had one of those, and this is a very juicy one. Again, not Activision and not EA, but regarding something on a subject that just will not go away. And that is the connection between real world violence and video game violence. This is just a subject that just will not go away. And I don't know how many times I've said it, but I sound like a broken record at this point. Video games. Do not cause real life violence. Ah, hello, good SY. Excuse me, right, so um, apologies for the interruption. Um, I've done my done a lot of research on that topic. Ah, uh, yes. Shall I, shall I go through to you some of the. Um, Benefits of, of, of actually playing video games. Do tell. So, let's start off with this. What if... What if thieves break into your house, typically flat... In my case, yes. And steal all your gaming equipment. Your Xbox One, gone. PS4, gone. Yep. What things would you have? What things would happen if you could stop playing video games? Your stress levels would increase. Mm -hmm. Your hand eye coordination would suffer. Mm -hmm. Your cognition will, um, will, um, will also suffer as you learn the game's various mechanics. Mm -hmm. 
your social skills will suffer as you'll be basically disconnected from other players. Considering a lot, of, considering pretty much everybody plays their games online these days. Yep. And. You know, in terms of the connection between video game violence and real violence, it's only done by one person, one type of people. And those people being? Sociopaths. Yep. Now, what sociopaths are, is basically people who had little to no parental contact when they were very young. The opposite... The, the opposite, the opposite side of a psychopath. Ooh, that's pleasant to know. So, right, so, let's take this for example. There was this man who was sitting on Texas's death row. Mm-hmm. Now, just, just to warn you guys, viewers, younger viewers, um, so, right, so anyway, as I was saying, ah yes, so this, there was this man who's, um, his parents died when he was very young, so he had very little to no contact with his parents, but he kept on playing Grand Theft Auto V. Mm -hmm. So one day he walked out his, walked out his house. <coughs> Did this to a driver, opened the door. Whoa! Basically, carjack. <laughs> yes, and of course, the police officer saw it. So, mm -hmm. so after about forty-five, um, so um, after about an hour or two long hour pursuit of the car, eventually, it eventually ran out of gas. Hmm. Or petrol to here in the UK, and unfortunately he got arrested. Pleasant to know. So during during his interrogation, he literally dove for the dove for the police officer's revolver pistol. Oh boy! He shot him there, right between the eyes. Quite literally. Ran up the stairs, shot the other. Then the other officers detained him. So it is said that that the skills he learned in Grand Theft Auto V is basically what he was doing. Doing the skills, performing the actions that he learned in Grand Theft Auto V. So you know what? No. Let's take one of the most infamous incidents in U.S. schools history. That wouldn't happen to be the Columbine mass, Columbine massacre by any chance, would it? Damn right, kiddo. <laughs> Gold star for you. <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyway, so first things first. He had no contact with his friends. Mm -hmm. The shooters. So that's, a, so that's a problem right out of the gate. Yep. So, so the majority of the time they were playing Doom. You know, you know, for the shitting, they're they're on my chat logs for some things. You know, apparently they're logged with something like this is going to be. This is going to be. Part of my language, but it's going to be like fucking doom. <coughs> Pardon the French. Yes, and um, I'm my my apologies, but then again, that was Eric Harris's words, not mine. Ah, cool. Now, in case you didn't know, Kenzie, Eric Harris is one of the shooters. Oh. <laughs> okay. And Dylan Krubold or something like that. So, so, um, so, and effectively, again, they were performing the act that they practiced while playing their video games. So, 
So this link between video game violence and real violence is completely debunked. And I don't even understand why studies even keep on doing that. Seriously, does it does anti-game video game activists actually pay university students by the word? Mm, nope. Is it, is it something like $150 per word on that study? Nope. Because you know, it's completely false. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, so I play Unreal Tournament a lot, but you don't see me grabbing a shotgun and taking everyone else in air out. Exactly. So... So consider that. I mean, I mean that's I mean that's like that's like me playing these racing games like Forza Horizon Four, which just came out earlier this week. I mean, I'm driving around high speeds, but you wouldn't see me doing that on the actual roads. Pretty much, yeah. But anyway, let's have a look at what this screw up article actually claims. Yeah, claims. By the way, James is with me again. He was with me for uh, Spyro. Yesterday, uh, annotation to that so, will. Um, annotation so to that will. Can I, so. Annotation to the Spy with the Dragon video will be in the uh, at the end of the video. Just two seconds, please. Go ahead. Where's? Was it? Was it your after? My phone. Hold up. Should have gone to Specsavers. Right, so anyway. So, anyway, like I, say, like I said, I've got James with me today. He's going to be with me tomorrow as well for the first episode of Everything Wrong with the Apprentice. So, just give us two seconds while I, um, while I, <laughs> while I get this phone's inbuilt wide detector out. Uh oh. <laughs> so. So test it, shall I? Let's test this. Test it, shall I? <clears throat> this actually has an inbuilt light detector, right? Ah, <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Right. So anyway, right. So anyway, so let's start off with this, okay? Go so, ahead. Simple yes or no questions. No. 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 Test the inbuilt light detector. Uh, but the, the, how, how lie detectors work, James, is the fact that one asks a question and it's a yes or no answer. Well, well, this one, um, um, and this, um, and this one simply uses microphone audio and has been able to tell simply by voice to see whether or not the person is lying. For example. Look like this. Can you can forever. It's a good game. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. Um, what else is there? Uh, Activision is the best game company in the world. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sports Nights is the best game in the world right now. No! <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, my internet alias is Kenzie Retro. You're telling the truth. Okay, that works. Okay, uh, it, it works. It works on both ends. Uh, and now for the big one. Video games cause real life violence. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. <laughs> so, here we go. This is what the article says. James, 
kindly take a seat. This is gonna be a juicy one. Okay, no, I'm just, no, no, I'm just gonna prefer to stand here with the, uh, with the adult light detector. Okay, the latest in the long-standing debate over vi violent video games, they do cause players to become more physically aggressive. The an international study looking at more than 17,000 adolescents ages 9 to 19 from 2010 to 2017 found playing violent video games led to increased physical aggression over time. Okay. The, the analysis of 24 studies from countries including the US, Canada, Germany and Japan found those who played video games, such, violent games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty and Manhunt were more likely to exhibit behaviour such as being sent to principal's office for fighting or hitting a non-family member. Um, yeah, about that. Anyone below 18 shouldn't be playing Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty or Manhunt to begin with. Age ratings are on the boxes for a reason! Do the, do the parents not even take the age ratings into consideration anymore? Although no single research project is definitive, our research aims to provide the most current and compelling responses to key criticisms on the topic. Yeah, 2010? That's not current, that's eight years ago! Said Jay Hull, lead, of the, lead author of the study published on Monday in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Based on our findings, we feel it is clear that violent video game play is associated with subsequent increases in physical aggression, said Hull. Associate, Associate Dean of Faculty for Social Sciences at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire, and the Dartmouth Professor of Psycho Psychological and Brain Sciences. Violent video game, video game violence has been a hot button issue for more than a decade, nearly two decades to be more to the point. Interest in research on video games potential for violence increased after it after it was learned Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold, Dylan Klebold yeah. the two teenagers who committed the Columbine High School shooting, played the first person shooting computer game, Doom. That is a game that has fictional monsters that aren't even real and you are fighting them on Mars! But in 2011, Take note, but in 2011, Supreme Court, but it, in a 2011 Supreme Court decision over, oh for crying out loud, but in a 2011 Supreme Court decision overturning California's ban on the sale of violent video games to minors, oh heaven forbid. I'm sorry, is it the Democrats really is trying to sabotage video, the video game industry? That wouldn't surprise me at this point. The late Justice Antonin Scalia <coughs> dismissed a link between games and aggression. These studies have been rejected by every court to consider them, and with good reason. They do not prove that video games cause minors to act aggressively, he wrote in the majority opinion. Since then, an American Psychologist Association task Force reports in 2015 found a link between violent video games and increased aggression in players, but insufficient evidence to violent games that vi violent games lead to criminal violence. Earlier this year, President Donald Trump or President um, Cheeto. Uh, President Stupid Dump convened a video game summit a month after the February shooting that killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman, Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Um, 
You know what? You know what? Quote you know what? You know what? I went. I'll read out this quote. Uh, my best Donald Trump impersonation. It's gonna be. I've got the best Donald Trump impression in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be tasty. Prior to that meeting. No. Prior no, to no. that meeting, Trump said. No highlight. Highlight the damn text, man. So I can read it out. Try I'm that hearing, meeting, Trump I'm, said. I'm hearing more and more people say on the violence on video games is really shaping young people's thoughts. We're gonna build a wall around around knock on Rockstar Games, and you know what? <laughs> you know what? We'll make Nicola Sturgeon pay for that wall. <laughs> Those in the study who played violent games, whether frequently or, or infrequently, had an increased risk of aggressive behaviour. The new research echoes Hull's previous finding that playing violent video games equates to about twice the risk of being sent to the principal's office for fighting during an eight-month period. He said a separate 2014 study he oversaw of violent video games in 2000 families is one of 24, one of the 24 in the meta-analysis. The effect is relatively small, but statistically reliable. No. Relatively small and, statistic and statistically unreliable. The, f the effect does exist, he claims. While there's no research suggesting violent video games lead to criminal behaviour, Hull's previous research suggests players may practice riskier behaviours, such as reckless driving, binge drinking, smoking and unsafe sex. Lies. Lies. <laughs> A lot of people ask, do these games really cause these kids to behave aggressively? I would say that is one possibility. He said, the other possibility is that it's a really bad sign. If your kids are playing these games, either these games have are having a warping effect on right and wrong, or they have a warped sense of right or wrong, and that's why they are attracted to these games. Either way, you should be concerned about it. In the research paper, Hull and the co-authors say they hope the findings will help research move past the question of whether violent video games increase aggressive behaviour and towards questions regarding why, when and for whom they have such effects. Um, when uh, uh, there shouldn't be any questioning on this topic to begin with. I've lost count of how many times I have said this, that video games do not cause violence. And yet you've still got these clowns, knuckleheads, morons and idiots and everything in between trying to claim otherwise. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why this is our gaming screw-up of the week. Now on to the regular news. PlayStation Network may finally be getting an option for users to change their names. This is on IGN. So here we go. One of the fans' longest and most often no, requested... No, no, no. IGN, don't you mean IGN or int? Let's not worry about that. I, 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 IGN, I... Yes, I know, I know what, I know what you mean. Anyway, one of the fans' longest and most often requested PlayStation Network features may finally be arriving soon. Kotaku reports that multiple anonymous developers of multiplayer PlayStation games have informed the site that the ability for PlayStation Network users to change their usernames is coming soon. Three different individuals from different game studios have apparently spent the last several months fixing bugs and adjusting settings to make their games compatible with the new feature. Meanwhile, a fourth individual shared a photo of an internal Sony document displaying the option Edit Username. Kotaku did not publish the photo or make clear if this fourth person was affiliated with one of the other three studios mentioned or another one entirely. In any case, the fourth source noted the documentation was a how-to guide for changing a PSN username. 
No release date for the feature has been revealed, and Sony had no comment in response to Kotaku's reporting. Additionally, it said that displaying new usernames on older games could be a time-consuming and challenging process due to PSN IDs being linked to usernames rather than some sort form of universally unique identifier. The PlayStation Network has lacked an option for changing usernames ever since its 2006 launch and users have been asking for the feature to be implemented pretty much ever since. By contrast, Xbox, Microsoft's Xbox Live allows infinite username changes with the first being free and each subsequent change costing eight US dollars. Okay. Okay. This isn't the first time the feature has seemingly been on its way to PSN, however. Sony sur surveyed users about the option to change the usernames back in 2014. The console holder again questioned users about the feature in 2015. And last year, Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios chairman Sean Layden even implied the feature would launch by December 2018. So we could only be waiting a couple of months. Let me put it this way. I hope we'll see events occur so that you don't have to ask me that question about username changes, about next PSX, N said Layden at the time, referring to the PlayStation Experience event Sony holds annually in December. But Sony may have a way out of Layden's seeming commitment. The CEO announced last week that Sony won't hold a PSX this year. Interesting. Damage control! Damage limitation to it! It doesn't mean anything. Yep. Cyberpunk comes out 2019, says a Turkish publisher. This one is on Game Zone. It looks like Cyberpunk 2077, the highly anticipated sci-fi sci action RPG by the creators of Behind the Witcher games, is poised to arrive much sooner than anyone really anticipated. According to a tweet by Bilkum, the Turkish publisher of Cyberpunk 2077, the game will come out as soon as next year. Bilkum has deleted their tweet short, shortly after posting it, but here's a screen cap of it. The, uh, they have a screen cap of it via VG247 Turkey. No doubt Bilkum was quickly contacted by CD Projekt Red to take down the tweet. After all, the developer has very openly dismissed any expectations by the gaming press and audience with regards to a soon game release. Actually, what we have so far heard from the Polish game creators painted a rather early development phase, leaving eager fans impatient. This that's understandable to some extent, as Cyberpunk 2077 was uh, as Cyberpunk 2077 was unveiled back in 2012. That's been six years now. That's a lifetime ago in the gaming industry. And to add salt on Today, the wound, um, um, I pray to the Lord that it doesn't take as long as a certain game that that um, that was stuck in development in hell for about twelve years. And the less said about that, the game, the better. What? You think I was gone forever? Um. We certainly wish you did. You that's a that's a lifetime ago in the gaming industry, and to add salt on the wound, all these years, all fans had was an admittedly cool teaser trailer. Game development is getting more and more complicated with bigger staff, costs, and development time, especially for AAA blockbuster games. As such, Cyberpunk 2077 looks like an ambitious project, even after. And even after having another massive RPG under their belt with The Witcher 3, which went on to become 2015 Game of the Year. Thankfully, things started to look up for Cyberpunk 2077 with CD, when CD Projekt Red, to the surprise of everyone, released their first in-game trailer this E3, and an insanely long and detailed gameplay demo in late August. In a rare case, what was shown not only met, but exceeded the already sky-high expectations of fans. The level of polish, scale, polish and scale present in the gameplay demo lit up flames of hope that Cyberpunk 2077 had caught up with its development, and a sooner than thought release was on the cards. Today's accidental tweet could be confirmation for those hopes. CD Projekt Red hasn't addressed the supposed release date, but we'll keep you updated with any news around Cyberpunk 2077. 
as will I on this podcast. So, potentially 2019 for Cyberpunk 2077, eh? Um, yeah, but being honest with you, I would rather wait an extra month or so to get a fully polished product rather than, um, rather, rather than a game being released, um, then, then it took them about two years, um, to fix it. <coughs> Message of collection. Hmm. Yeah. Also, um, what else? Uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, anybody? Five years between Mass Effect 3 and Andromeda. Development had to be restarted like twice. And it was basically rushed to completion in about two years. <sighs> two letters brings to mind. E motherfucking A. Yes. So big, you have to chew it. Thank you for the, um... <laughs> man Bird Moon. Man Bird Moon! I miss watching that. It's such a good show. I know, but it's just disgusting, I'm afraid. I wouldn't mind tackling one of those challenges. I know, but you don't... You, you don't want it that on blooming live television. If it was live, I'd be very concerned. <laughs> Going on television. Right, so anyway, right, so can we not move on to our next uh, news story, please? <sighs> right, next up, uh, some sad news in the gaming industry uh, just announced this morning. Um, legendary Commodore 64 composer Ben. Ben Daglish. Daglish has sadly uh, passed away. One of the 8-bit computing scene's most talented musicians has sadly passed away, leaving a legacy that includes The Last Ninja and Trap. The retro gaming scene has lost one of its most celebrated figures, with news that British composer Ben Daglish has died at the age of 52. Daglish worked on various 8- and 16-bit computer formats, including Sinclair ZX Spectrum, Amstrad CPC. Ah, so he worked for Lord Sugar's company. Mm. That's about that. Commodore 64 and Commodore, um, Commodore Amiga. He's best known for his work. His best known work was for the Commodore 64 game The Last Ninja, which he created in conjunction with Anthony Lees. But he also worked on many other classic soundtracks. Including Trap, 720, Switchblade, Deflector, Death Witch 3, Mask 3, Venom Strikes Back, and The Vikings. No matter the quality of the games themselves, Daglish's music was often the, a highlight and gamers at the time would often play them just to listen to the soundtrack. Daglish was also notable for embracing the modern chip tune fan community many of whom discovered his music without ever having played the games they were, they were originally from. He would also often attend fan events and play his music live for the fans. Wow. Daglish's wife, Sarah, confirmed the news via Facebook and issued the following short statement. For those of you who didn't know, I'm, who don't already know, I'm deeply sorry to pass on the news that Ben died very suddenly on Monday morning. We know that it will come as a shock to many of you as it has to us. We are all we are all at home feeling loved and supported and our thoughts are with you all who knew, loved, got irritated by and were lucky enough to have a little bit of his magic in your lives. And we've had various tweets as well. Lord Ars, yes, that is the legitimate name of this Twitter account. I just heard the terrible news that legendary composer Ben Daglish has died at the age of 52. A pioneer of Commodore 64 music, Ben was famous for his soundtracks to games such as The Last Ninja with Anthony Lee's Trap and Deflector. My thoughts are with his friends and family. Matt Gray as well. 
really devastating to share the news that the brilliant and charismatic Ben Degley sadly lost his battle, his ongoing battle on Monday. Oh. So he was battling cancer then, by the sounds of it. Not only was he a very warm, friendly, and genuine guy, he was a hugely talented VGM composer. Condo Very game music. Thank you. Condolences to his wife, Sarah, and his children. R.I.P. Ben. Commodore 64 Audio saying, The world needs more Benny Deglish, not less. K8Bits said, Very sad to hear that Ben Deglish, hashtag C64, music legend, Last Ninja Cobra, and Return of the Mutant Camels, and... Flautist extraordinaire of revival bands stuck in the 80s has passed away. Retro Hour posted as well. We have just heard the sad news that the game music legend Ben Deglish has passed away. He was not only one of our favourite musicians, but a lovely guy who travelled 30 miles in snow to sit, to sit in with us in our early days of the podcast. R.I.P. Ben. Thanks for all the music and memories. And Jeff Minter said, well... Mm. R.I.P. Ben Douglish, amazing talent and an absolutely lovely bloke with it. Wow. Well, there we go. That's that's two big video game legends we lost this year. The other one being well, I think the other one being Total Biscuit. Mm-hmm. So yeah, video game personalities can be treated as celebrities as well. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Anyway, so so I, from from the two of us here, um, thoughts and prayers with the Benny. with the family of Ben Deglish at this uh, difficult time. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We've got some news on place, more news on PlayStation. And oh, seriously, Juan, did PSN get hacked again? Nope. Not surprising. Nope. What happened was, November's free PS Plus games have accidentally been revealed by PlayStation already. Yes, I need to Not now, Boris. The free PS Plus games for October may have only just released this week, but the PlayStation has already announced the two PS4 titles that will be available for zero charge to members of the online service in November. This is very unlike PlayStation, which usually reveals its PS Plus games around a week before they go live on the first Tuesday of each month. But the proof doesn't lie. Unlike a superior rumour or hazy mobile screenshot of the PSN store, which have often proven to be false. The two featured PS Plus games for November can be found plastered across PlayStation's own website. According to the PS4 portal, both Yakuza Kiwami and Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition will be available for PlayStation Plus subscribers next month, most probably on November the 6th. Free to download and keep so long as you're enrolled in the service, the title is Sega's 2016 remake of the original 2005 Yakuza game on the PlayStation 2. While the latter is the remastered current-gen port of Bulletstorm, people can fly's outlandishly first good, good first-person shooter of 2011. Both games are absolutely worth a playthrough, even if they will, even if they will be releasing during the busiest period of the gaming calendar, only two weeks after the launch of Red Dead Redemption 2. Still. If you can oh, pass. by the way, oh, oh, by the way, do you know how big RDR2 is going to take to install? 103 gig. Yeah, I kind of read that on the podcast last week. <laughs> so, yeah, have fun trying to clear out space for that one, folks. No, thank you. I've still got about 1.6 terabytes of hard drive space remaining. You're lucky, Spud. I'm lucky if I've got half my space left. And that's the 500 gigabytes and the 1 terabyte hard drive. The 500 gig hard drive is already full. 
Because we think, man, I've got a two terabyte one. Remind me to get said two terabyte hard drive next time. I mean, I only got that one terabyte hard drive because it was meant to be for my college work for filming broadcasting, but nope, I decided to use it to get more games on my Xbox. Still, few can pass up on titles as good as these when they're free, and hopefully Sony, <coughs> Sony isn't messing us about with this potential marketing faux pas. Well, what, um, what is he, Bulletstorm is good? Doubt that. Please yeah, that was on the 360 though. No, I've actually played the full complete edition on the Xbox One. About twelve pounds of flush down the toilet. Ah. <laughs> so, Blizzard co-founder is leaving the company. Wow. That's big. World of Warcraft and Overwatch developer Blizzard Entertainment is a busy company right now. Not only is the studio preparing for BlizzCon, its annual games convention, but it's also handling a massive shakeup at the top. Blizzard's co-founder, CEO and president Mike Morhaime has now announced that he will be leaving the company after 27 years. Goodness me, that's a very long time. In a post Seven years after StarCraft came out. Do you mean StarCraft 2? No, StarCraft. StarCraft was celebrating 20 years old last year. Oh! StarCraft 2 was released in 2011. Yeah, I can't even remember you. I see. Or 2010, about that. Anyway. Uh, in a post published to the official Blizzard website this week, Morhaime explains that he has decided it's time for someone else to lead Blizzard Entertainment. Morhaime doesn't go into details about what made him come to this decision exactly, but the departing executive does say that he is grateful to both the hardworking and talented people at Blizzard as well as the fans in the community. Moreover, Morhaime confirms that he will maintain a role as an advisor to the company. Okay, so he's not fully leaving the company. He's still going to be there to support them. Yes, I know. I mean, for goodness sake, you put them on the blooming map. Mm -hmm. Taking Morhaime's place at the top will be J. Allen Brack, who has been at Blizzard for 12 years and has been the executive producer of World of Warcraft. Morhaime describes Brack as his friend, colleague, friend, colleague, and trusted advisor and also praises his unwavering commitment to Blizzard's community as well as his leadership and his commitment to quality. Brack, meanwhile, calls it a huge honor and a tremendous responsibility to be given the role as Blizzard's CEO. Well, how's about that? So we've got a new CEO now. Well, he's hoping, uh, well, definitely sounds like from that, it's a case of, yeah, I trust this guy. I want to have him as the new At head man. At least it's not Activision CEO, otherwise the company's screwed. Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so, Blizzard Entertainment also... <laughs> Otherwise, otherwise, Starcraft will be filled with loot boxes. Yep. <laughs> and MTX. Yep. And we really can do without those in uh, their games. Oh, wait, hang on. Overwatch has microtransactions, but they are only cosmetic. <laughs> Not... <coughs> The, not the ridiculous scandal that was Star Wars Battlefront 2 and EA are still feeling the effects of that nearly 12 months on. Oh, God. Watch for us I will. And he's got to review that piece of trash. Exactly. I actually had to review that Thanksgiving pile of horse manure. Yeah. Now, 
This one is from The Telegraph. No plans for Minecraft 2 as game continues to dwarf Fortnite play account. Really? Really now? Really? <sighs> Think that the headline grabbing Fortnite is the world's most popular video game right now? Think again. Publisher Microsoft has revealed that Minecraft, the voxel based voxel based building and survival game, has over 91 ac million active monthly players. That's a significant 13 million advance on the record 78.3 million players that Fortnite posted in August this year. Minecraft is the second highest selling video game of all time, behind the classic puzzle of Tetris, with 154 million copies sold worldwide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get on with it! Okay, 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 goodness sake. For goodness sake! I swear on my life, if we have to hear that Monty Python one more time, I swear on my life, I'm gonna... Okay. In addition to these sales, the game is available for free in China. Ooh! What? Published by Chinese tech giant NetEase in collaboration with Microsoft, and has over 100 million registered users, giving Minecraft a pool of over 250 million potential players that continues to grow! The amount of monthly players has increased by 20 million in 2018 alone. This vast player count means that Microsoft, who bought Minecraft and its development studio Mojang for $2.5 billion in 2014, are unlikely to develop a Minecraft 2 anytime soon, as they don't want to split the enormous active user base. I think this could be one of those games as a service like, like Rocket League. Yep. Which wouldn't surprise me, don't get me wrong. I mean, Fortnite's pretty much gonna pretty much a games as a service at this point. I mean, they're already on season six, and it only came out just last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think that makes sense for Minecraft, given the community. Minecraft head Helen Chiang told Business Insider, "It's something that's always fractures the community. We all want to ask players to move from Minecraft one to Minecraft two. We want to we want them to just enjoy Minecraft," said Chiang. And there's other ways that we can expand that we can expand that are more meaningful and authentic to want to what they, we want to be rather than just releasing another iteration in the way that most other franchises do instead microsoft are looking to expand minecraft's popularity with spin-offs such as the recently announced minecraft dungeons this is a combat-based dungeon crawler crafted in the style of minecraft and will not feature the traditional building and survival elements this isn't the first time that Minecraft has expanded beyond its core conceit, which has groups of players building incredibly detailed worlds. With Telltale Games' narrative game Minecraft Story Mode proving such a success, it was commissioned for as an interactive show for Netflix before Telltale faced a majority studio closure last month. While Minecraft hit the heights of its mainstream media attention just ahead of the 2014 sale, Microsoft has con Microsoft have continued to grow the franchise to its current high. Often dubbed Digital Lego, the main Minecraft game has expanded across multiple platforms, including Nintendo Switch, while continuous free updates has kept the game thriving. I wouldn't be too surprised if we had a Minecraft movie at this point. And, and heck, I'd, I'd go and see it. Oh, James, for once we could actually have a good Minecraft film. A video game film. As long as it sticks to the style of the game, we will be fine. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned there the Telltale uh, Majority uh, Shutdown, because they've, they've pretty much gone bankrupt, and they've essentially closed up shop, but they are determined to finish the final season of The Walking Dead. Yep. I mean, they've already got two episodes out, but when they're going to get the next two released is beyond me. But uh, I'll be keeping everybody up to date on that one. So here we go. Turn-based strategy game Civilization 6 now available on iPhone. Wow. 
<coughs> and this would be the appropriate point to play the Civilization 6 theme, which is absolutely amazing, while I read out this article. What do you want? Alright, so you The Civilization 6 theme, if possible. You want it? You got it. You lucky son of a gun! How did you get it? Easy, iTunes. What, what is wrong with that, you music pirate? <laughs> iTunes? You are on Android! So? How did you transfer your iTunes library onto this? That's easy, need. That's easy. Buy it. Buy the games on the iTunes store. Then simply copy it over to your... Copy it. Then, then simply find the files. Copy them into your Android phone. Then it's there. Show off. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> See what you made me do. <laughs> now I'm gonna have to reopen Google Play Music. Not having much luck here, are we? Yes, no thanks to you. What have I done? Distract me, you thief. Christopher Ten. That's the one. Sogno di Voler. Ah, yes. And I believe this game was released in 2016. My 2016 PC game of the year. Shame I couldn't get it into my top 10 games of the year because I couldn't get it on my laptop. Anyway, Fire Axis Games turn-based strategy title Sid Meier's Civilization VI Stealth launched on iOS today. And people can play it for free for the first 60 turns. Developer and publisher Asphere Media is responsible... As fire. As fire, thank you. Is responsible for the iOS port and says Civilization 6 is a universal app, which means iPad owners can play the iPhone version for free, but the iPad version includes the base game only, not the expansion content. Civilization 6 first launched on PC in 2016, it was well received by critics and won numerous accolades, including best strategy game at both the Game Awards and DICE Awards. It allows players to build empires and lead civilizations from the Stone Age to the Information Age by researching technology, engaging in diplomacy or warfare, or and expanding their lands. It also has a traditional multiplayer component, plus a variety of short scenarios designed to be completed in a single session. Civilization 6 requires iOS 11 on an iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, iPhone 8 or 8 Plus, iPhone X, iPad Air 2, iPad 2017, or any iPad Pro. To celebrate the iPhone launch, Asfire is currently offering the full game unlock at a 60% discount for $24. The sale is available only on the App Store and ends on October 16th at 11.59pm Pacific <coughs> Daylight Time. A Nintendo Switch version of Civilization 6 is also in the works. It's expected to release on November 16th and includes all the latest updates and improvements along with four content packs that add new civilizations, leaders and scenarios to the game. It also features cooperative and competitive multiplayer for up to four players via a wireless local area network. WLAN to you me. Well! I think it's only going to be a matter of time before they port it over to Xbox and PlayStation, or even onto Android. Which would not surprise me at this point. Yes, for as, for as long as we don't know, sorry, for as long as we... For as, for as long as we... Um, Avoid Gandhi the what the um, Lord of Nooks. Yeah. Right, so anyway, as I was saying, for uh, as long as we avoid warmongering Gandhi the war the Lord of Nooks. What? Legit! 
Oh no! That's part of the. Oh, that's part of the soundtrack. Civilization Five soundtrack. Oh, for crying out loud! Oh my word! <laughs> yes. Yep. Apparently, that is the music that you'll be playing when you, when, when, when you're at war with Mahatma Gandhi. If that happens, get ready to get friggin' nuked. Um, <laughs> duly noted, I think. It's a well-known <laughs> meme. Oh, it's a well-known meme. Lord Gandhi, the Lord Nukes. Good to know. Anyway, some Overwatch news now, and Overwatch are getting Lego sets. Woohoo! Don't worry, the cavalry's here. <laughs> Justice reigns from above. <laughs> It's high noon. I've got you in my sights. I'll take a look at you! Or something along those lines. For goodness sake, man. People are trying to sleep. People are trying to sleep. It's half past seven in the evening, James. Oh, never mind. Thank you. Now, if it was half past eleven, if it was half past eleven in the evening, then yes, I would be very boundary concerned. But I am not. So, we shall continue. Overwatch fans have paid tribute to the game in LEGO in some pretty cool ways, like the Soldier 76 Rifle and Visor, or Tracer's Twin Pistols. And soon, they'll be able to show their colourful plastic brick-based fandom in a more official capacity. Oh, by the way, Fraser, did yeah. you know, and did you know, apparently there's something like six LEGO bricks for every man, woman and child on this planet. The combinations you could come up with with just six? Pfft. You're not short of options. Yes, but then again, let me put it in there. Right guys, so let me express this for you. If you had every single Lego brick in the world, or should I say you'll have, yes you have. Not now, Donald Trump. I would rather have Clarkson say this bit. <laughs> or should I say, I would rather have Clarkson say this next bit. Okay, right, so, so, if you had every single Lego brick in the world... You didn't do the pause! This is how it's supposed to be done. If you had every single Lego brick... In the world... There you go! Uh, you would have enough to give everyone... In the world... Six bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard actually revealed that Overwatch Lego sets are in the works back in May and teased them on Twitter just back in August. <laughs> but now we can finally lay eyes on an actual Overwatch minifig, or at least an animated rendition of one, the August teaser suggested that six characters would be Legoized <coughs> initially, but I'm not surprised that Tracer is the first to properly be seen. She is the face of the franchise after all. Yes, I know that. There's no hint of a release date or anything beyond the teaser, but Blizzard said that it will have more info to share very soon. Now, I wouldn't mind an Overwatch Lego set for Christmas or my birthday. I wouldn't mind. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Lego sets were amazing. And still are to this day. I mean, I mean, in an age filled with technology, you've still got youngsters wanting Lego sets. And a lot of that's down to the Lego films that have come out over the last few years. The first Lego movie, Lego Batman movie, and Lego Ninjago movie, the latter two, came out just last year. Yes, I know, but... But... But then again, I remember other, um, other, um, other toy, um, other construction sets under the, under that vein. Remember Meccano? Oh, I remember that, yeah. Goodness me, have we been consuming member berries from South Park? No. No, 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 we haven't. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. It's not. He's not a fan of member berries. I don't blame him. Anyway, next up, 
New Nintendo Switch model coming next year could feature improved display, according to reports. This is on GameSpot. Wow, a scratch-proof display. Let's find out. <laughs> hashtag, um, hashtag Nintendo Switch Stop. You are aware that the Nintendo Switch had two contenders for Game of the Year last year come out on it. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which has been regarded as the best Zelda game ever made, next to Ocarina of Time. And Super Mario Odyssey, which is amazing. I am definitely planning on getting a Switch. Yeah, I mean, heck, I could get this new model if I wanted to. I'm, I might not try to play the Switch. And... Could even play it. Lack of accessible features. Anyway, just as predicted, any Nintendo Switch model is coming next year to help keep sales going strong. This is according to a report from the Wall Street Journal, which sources the information to suppliers and other people with direct knowledge of Nintendo's plans. Nintendo is still debating what new hardware and software features to include in the upgrade and weighing the cost of the features. People with knowledge of the discussions said WSJ reported. How, uh, how, uh, oh, you're looking for a new model of Switch? How about a disk drive for GameCube compatibility and, uh, and slots for GameCube controllers? Oh, they'll have GameCube compat- they'll, they'll have GameCube control compatibility when Smash Bros. comes out in December. Wouldn't bank on it. Wouldn't even bank on it. James? Super Smash Bros. Switch? Back in June, at the end of E3, Super, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will support GameCube controllers. Nintendo said it themselves during the conference. Fair enough. Yes, but then again, but then again, what is the point of having a GameCube controller support when you don't have the GameCube games? For goodness sake. Who said you'd need GameCube games on the Switch? They can easily do that through the Nintendo eShop. Have they done so? Have they... Not, not yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happened anytime soon, James. Do not disrespect Nintendo. They're back on their feet after how bad the Wii U was. Excuse me, I would rather not do that. I have financial shares in Nintendo. So buy Switch, screw it, buy two of them. Thank you! <laughs> well, nice quick switch around. That was easy. Shut up. You're welcome. Get fired. <laughs> oh, by the way, tune in to Everything Wrong With The Apprentice tomorrow, folks. It's a very juicy one. <laughs> and even that's an understatement. Oh boy, it was a real ball. It was a real barnstormer. No, it was a real. I had a real ball sitting that. You and me both. Do the um, spider. Do <laughs> fight the little uh, interruption from Dad. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> One possibility is that Nintendo will improve the Switch's display with the update sources said. As Wall Street Journal points out, the display on the current edition of the Switch lacks some of the tech found in modern smartphones. A new display could make the tablet smaller and more energy efficient. Sources told Wall Street Journal that the updated Switch model could launch as soon as summer 2019. Ah, excellent. Got a few months to save up for it. It is expected and... it. it it is expected and normal for platform holders to update their consoles over time, in part due to new technology becoming viable and to drive interest and spur sales. Wall Street Journal reported in March that Nintendo would wait until 2019 or later to release their first Switch hardware revision, with the company instead focusing on beefing up Switch's online features. That is precisely what happened, as Nintendo recently launched its Nintendo Switch Online paid membership. 18 quid for the full year. 
That's half of Xbox Live and forty percent and forty percent of PlayStation Plus. So put those both together. You essentially that's essentially Wow. That's seventy quid less than both of them combined. And that's if you have all three systems. First man up, yes, but what exactly do you get from that? Good. Nintendo have been uh, anyway. Um in Nintendo. I mean seriously, if the online subscription is that is that low, hold the up the network would not be that secure. James, this is Nintendo we're talking about here. Yes. I've lost how many times the Wii got hacked. Service details. Enjoy competitive and cooperative online gaming with friends and rivals from around the world in support of Nintendo Switch titles such as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Splatoon 2. Enjoy an, enjoy access to a growing library of classic NES games anytime, anywhere with added online features and other enhancements like HD resolution, filters and special save states. Securely and automatically back up your da game data online for easy access. This makes it simple to retrieve your game data if you lose your Nintendo Switch console or start using a new one. Uh, cloud, um, cloud, um, cloud savings, nothing new, I'm afraid. Use the dedicated, use the de dedicated Nintendo Switch online smartphone app to enable voice chat and access special features in supported Nintendo Switch titles. And enjoy a range of offers only for members, such as exclusive products that only Nintendo Switch online members can purchase. And I, I mean, she was, look at this! $3.49 for a month, $6.99 for three months, $17.99 for the full year, family membership up to eight accounts, just over 30 quid. Can can Sony and Microsoft claim that? No, they can't. Uh, Microsoft's the most expensive but most secure. Nope. Sony is the most expensive. And they still haven't justified the increase. Exactly. Well, yeah. My, Sony... That's why I went from paying £50 a year for PlayStation Plus down to just paying for it £6.99 a month. I went from paying yearly to monthly. Nothing wrong with that. Right, so as I was saying, I S. Microsoft's um, Microsoft's Xbox Live network has been the best, most secure. I mean, for example, um, during twenty the twenty third Christmas the twenty thirteen Christmas DDoS attack. Do you mean 2015 DDoS attack? Yep. Which, frankly, I wasn't affected by because I didn't have a con because the controller I had had reached the end of the road and I had to get a new one on Boxing Day, which I wasn't overly concerned about. Right, so anyway, as I was saying, it took it took it took the team at Microsoft's Xbox under 12 hours for the network to come back on its feet. Whereas with PlayStation, took them about two, three, probably four days to restore service. Mm -hmm. So, importantly, the new Switch model does not appear to be a generational change like the one from Wii U to Switch, but instead a smaller scale upgrade of components, such as potentially the display and other elements. Wall Street Journal's report specifically states that the new Switch model will share many features with the original model and play existing games. Good to know! Back in January, Nintendo President Tatsumi Kimishima teased the Switch will have a longer life cycle than previous Nintendo consoles. Up until now, the hardware life cycle has trended at around 5 or 6 years. But it would be very interesting if we could prolong that life cycle and think you should be looking for 
and I think you should be looking forward to that, he said. As of June 30th, Nintendo has sold nearly 20 million Switch units and nearly 87 million games worldwide. One of the Switch's next big games is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which launches in early December and is sure to be a big-time system seller. Fair enough. Yeah, fair play. So that's... So apart from Red Dead Redemption 2, Smash Bros. Ultimate's the last big game that's coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Now, if I had a Switch by now, I would definitely be excited for, for Smash Bros. <laughs> yes, Kirby's my main in Smash. I know, I know. I actually managed to get to, what, second place in a competition with him at one point? Yes, I know. Is it? Shit, 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 shit. Get out of here! <laughs> Yeah, oh, uh, man, that was a good day. Yeah, that was in Megabytes. Yep. Megabytes level 2 is probably being built uh, or in uh, pre-production at the moment. Anyway, EA and Premier League have teamed up for a new esports competition, introducing the E-Premier League. Premier League and e the Premier League and EA have announced the first Premier E Premier League or EPL for short esports tournament. Here we go. Hang on there, hang on there. You tell me this. Go. Does invites to this EPL only available in Ultimate Team Gold Packs or something? <laughs> Take that, suckers! <laughs> Get the blonde, get the shades. Dive to definite thug life. Well, con one one contact the Belgian government. <laughs> <laughs> the EPL tournament kicks off in January 2019, <laughs> and we'll see players competing for three months across three rounds: online qualification, live club playoffs, and the live final. Each Premier League club will have a live playoff round, allowing two competitors, one PlayStation 4 player and one Xbox One player, a final shot at the final. If you think you've got what it takes, regist registration for the tournament opens in December. Online qualifications begin in January 2019 with club playoffs. While club playoffs take place from February to March 2019, the EPL final will be held in London, March 2019. And will operate, be operated by Gfinity. Now, let's have a look at this tournament structure. If it allows me to zoom in, of course. Because I cannot read this for the life of me. Right. So, here we go. So what we've got is we're going to have 320 from PlayStation, 320 from Xbox, 6 140 for the entire tournament. All, all UK residents aged 16 or over. Uh, right, that doesn't. Sounds like it does help if I can actually read this. All UK residents aged 16 and over can enter the ePremier League on PlayStation 4 or Xbox One at ePremierLeague.com from December 3rd, 2018, selecting the Premier League club they wish to represent. Now, if it were up to me, I would be representing Chelsea because that's my team. If it were up to you, James, who would you be representing? I'm blowing blowing bubbles, pretty bubbles in the air. West Ham. Thank you. The club playoffs. The top 16 players per club will each, on each platform, battle it out in club playoffs hosted at venues selected by their chosen Premier League club. And that whittles it down to 40. Playoff winners. Playoff winners from each club playoff represent their club in the E Premier League final for the chance to be crowned E Premier League champion. Which reminds me, 
whistling it from 40 down to 1. How are they going to have the PlayStation and Xbox player play against each other? How are they going to do that? You're, you're asking me. And they could be using PC, for example? Mm, no, because they specifically said they are using Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Unless... Cross-platform play, anyone? I wouldn't put it past them to use cross-platform play for this. Which would mean FIFA would be the next game to have cross-platform play. Yeah, after... I personally... I would I would doubt that. I'm sorry, I would doubt that. Mind you, this is EA we're talking about here, so... I wouldn't uh, mind put... you, I was actually saying, mind you, this is Sony we're talking about. The biggest monopoly in the gaming industry. Ah! You say that, but they finally caved in last week, and Fortnite is the first cross-platform play, pro first game in Sony's catalogue to have cross-platform play, officially with Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Yes, and that will most likely be the only game coming out for cross-platform cross play. No, 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 no. Sony caved in. They're going to need to start adding more later down the road. They're going to have to. They don't have a choice now. They caved in. They gave in to the pressure from the fans. Now the fans are going to be like, We want more! We want more! We want more! WWE cliche. Ding! Thanks. <laughs> now, that's the news out of the way. Ow. And, that, and we've only got one section left to do. We have got 50 achievements. Totaling up to 1,000 gamer score, which means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Cue the transition. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep. Points and trophies time for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is out today. Technically tomorrow, because we're, called, we're recording this on Thursday, but it's coming out tonight here on Friday. Anyway, so here we go. And would you believe it? Pretty much everything on the first page goes up for 15 gamer score. So anyway, here we go. Here is the achievement list as follows. In ascending order of gamer score. So, the following achievements are worth 15 gamer score. Aphrodite's Embrace. Spend the night with another character. Child of Poseidon. Complete all underwater location objectives. Demigod. Reach level 50. Fashion's Creed, equip a legendary armor set. Godly Power, acquire a tier 3 active ability. Hero for Hire, win your first on-land conquest battle in any region, in excluding Megaris in Hero's Journey. I have the power! You my creature. Thank you. Perform an overpower attack with every weapon type. Raise your bounty to the maximum level for Infamous. Make it your own. Engrave your first item. Ramming speed. Cleave a ship in half. Scourge of the Aegon. Sink your first epic ship. Shiny. Acquire and equip your first legendary item. The Midas Touch. Engrave a legendary item with a legendary effect. War Master. Kill the leader of any region with low resources other than Megaris. You work for me now. Recruit and assign a legendary NPC for your ship. The following achievements are worth 20 gamer score. Bloodsport. Defeat a mercenary in the arena. Harder, better, faster, stronger. The fuck we change. Thank you. Upgrade the... Adrestia for the first time. Hermes Homie. Unveil all sub-regions of Greece. Mystheos in train. Complete 20 bounties, war contracts, or naval quests from message boards. Top of the food chain, become the first mercenary. The following achievements are worth 30 gamer score. Are you not entertained? Become the champion Bloody of the arena. Cliche. Thank you. I am legend! Equip one legendary melee weapon and five legendary armor pieces. Fully Lord of the Seas, fully upgrade the Adrestia, the Argonauts, 
fully crew the Adrestia with legendary lieutenants. And now we've got a lot of secret achievements, which are hmm, just story related. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? First secret achievement. All together now. This is madness. Madness. This is Sparta. Complete the battle of 300 for 10 gamer score. We actually went and did it. Yeah. Big feed. You crazy maniacs. They've only gone and done it. They've got a... This is Sparta there as well. <laughs> oh, by, oh, by the way, 2012 card, they want their memes back. Ah, of course. <laughs> Didn't 300 come out in 2006? Damn it. Thank you. And Odyssey in the making, complete episode. I mean, I mean, a lot of these are just complete episode one, discover Atlantis, complete episode six, episode three, episode five, yada, yada, yada. Riddle me this! Out with the Sphinx for 15 gamer score. Isn't the Sphinx in Egypt? Yes. Why have they got a Sphinx in Greece? They have, they have most likely got Egypt in the world. Egypt's in Africa. This is set in Greece. I don't know. Pretty sure. No, I suppose we'll find out when I when I get around to playing it because I've still got the rest of the Assassin's Creed series to get through. Yes, I'm including Rogue Net. Heaven forbid. Anyway, uh, a legend in the media. Uh, bright right is discover Atlantis and speak with Pythagoras. Pythagoras. I was close. Uh, 15 games, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. Stink Eye, recover the Cyclops Eye from a goat in Kefalonia. Uh, Wrath of the Amazons. Okay, okay I'm, I'm skipping all the um, complete episode things here. Uh, the Bright Mind. No. Um, Stink Eye. Uh, Wrath of the Amazons. Cleave a ship while having an all-women crew. Wonder Woman, anybody? <laughs> Yes, but then the Amazons was um, was the Amazonians is what one is what Wonder Woman's part of. Mm -hmm. Right, I was like for me complete Xenia's quest line. Uh, maze in victory defeat the Minotaur. I mean that would be one of the bosses. Everybody benefits complete Marco's quest line. Uh, defeat Medusa, Master of the Hunt complete the Daughters of Artemis. Artemis. Artemis, thank you. Questline. Uh, episode 8. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Complete the Hippocrates questline. Going for gold. Complete the Olympic questline. Legacy restored. Upgrade your spear to tier 6. One head down. Defeat a full cluster of cult cultists. Uh, cultists. Thank you. Of Cosmos, I couldn't quite make out that eye. The Cult Unmasked, defeat all the cultists of Cosmos. Island Hopper, complete 20 quests on Pefka, Obsidian, and Abantis Islands. And the rest of the achievements are just basically defeating bosses and completing the episodes. Okay. And there we go! That is it for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. That is episode 25 out of the way. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoyed the year. So folks, uh, if you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to turn on last day to get notifications. What's the thing I do on this channel? Uh, I've got Spy with the Dragon on the left. Podcast playlist on the right. Tomorrow, the start of everything wrong with the apprentice. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful, as always.